after trading Donovan Mitchell to the Cleveland Cavaliers, the Utah Jazz could potentially have a fire sale, and there may be some players that the Raptors could potentially try to pry away from the Utah Jazz in a trade. What is up everyone, welcome to the Warch Report. So for today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at five players the Raptors could potentially target from the Utah Jazz's roster, as well as I'm going to narrow it down to three players on my final list of who I think make the most sense for the Raptors, taking into consideration their strengths and their weaknesses, how they would fit into the Toronto Raptors, and what the Raptors would have to potentially give up to acquire them. So if you're ready to watch this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Let's try to get this video to 130 likes. And if you want to become a part of a basketball community that engages positively in the comments section and a YouTuber that not only looks and reads at the comments, but even replies to them, even may, when I may disagree with them, this is definitely the community for you. So if you want to hit the subscribe button as well, that would be very much appreciated. So with that being said, let's get into today's video. Now, as you guys know, I do like to give out shout outs on my channel. And for today's video, we have Ethan, who is all the way from Ireland. So Ethan, thank you so much for supporting the channel, your likes and comments. It is very much appreciated. Now, let's quickly highlight the Utah Jazz's roster and what it currently looks like because we know that trade happened and obviously there's a few names missing from this roster, but particularly guys like Colin Sexton, who is very unlikely to get moved, consider that he just did a sign-in trade and also guys like Hassan Whiteside as well. But taking a look at their roster, they have a very interesting mix of some really young players and some veteran pieces as well. Now, pretty much the top half of the roster, realistically speaking, they're not going to get traded. And I'm going to cross off Rudy Gobert right off the bat because Rudy Gobert, 36 years old, doesn't make a lot of sense for the Toronto Raptors. At this stage of his career, I'm pretty sure he wants to go on a contending team and win a championship as well. So I just don't see that being a good fit. And I want to talk about five players. So let's jump into our first player here. And our first player here is Malik Beasley. Now, this one is someone I'm actually very intrigued by because you take a look at his point production in the right-hand column. He could be an instant bucket getter. He could be a, what they like to call a microwave, come off the Raptors bench, essentially be that six-man role and come in and provide some really good bench scoring. Bench scoring was a big issue for the Raptors last season. So acquiring someone like Malik Beasley would ensure not only that the Raptors have some depth at that shooting guard position, which they clearly lack at the moment, but they would also provide a lot of relief for the starters who played intense and heavy minutes last season. It would essentially come in provide some scoring and he can also shoot the three-point ball really well when you take a look at his three-point percentage after his first couple seasons he struggled a bit but after that he has not shot under 37 percent from the three-point line and that is quite impressive especially the last three seasons where he has taken eight plus threes from the three-point line well, that is an impressive feat for Malik Beasley and also the fact that he's a pretty good three uh, free throw shooter as well which makes a huge difference for teams that really want to play certain guys in late game situations then you don't have to worry about them missing free throws but also that the other team won't intentionally foul a bad free throw shooter so I think that's one of the more underrated aspects of the NBA so I think Malik Beasley would honestly be a very nice fit for the Toronto Raptors now let's take a look at player number two here and this should come as to no surprise to anyone Jordan Clarkson could be the legitimate six man for the Toronto Raptors. Again, much like Malik Beasley, I know he can play the point guard position. He can fill in that shooting guard position as well and really provide some relief for Malachi Flynn. Well, not Malachi Flynn, I should say. He could really provide some relief for guys like Fred Van Vliet and Gary Churn Jr. He could provide some good minutes, some really nice quality minutes for the Raptors and come off the bench. And much like Malik Beasley, he can provide some much needed scoring off of the bench. He's a great scorer. And I think what makes Jordan Clarkson one of the most underrated bench pieces in the entire NBA is you could essentially plug him into any team around the NBA and he would come and do the same thing for a lot of teams. He could come in, be that bucket getter off of the bench. And I think he's a player that really understands his role, which is why he makes for such a good six man of the year he could potentially win that award as well but that's for another day that topic but he understands his role that is why so many players struggle off of the bench that is not the case with Jordan Clarkson now he may not be as great of a three-point shooter as Malik Beasley is but he's still someone who's a really good mid-range shooter and much like Malik Beasley he's a good free throw shooter which is great again he doesn't do too much of other than that he's not a great rebounder he's got some he's, he's okay size wise he's not the biggest player but again the Raptors do need a little bit depth at the shooting guard position but 
he could definitely come in and fill in that role for the Raptors. So I think he's a very interesting piece to keep your eyes on as well. And let's move on to player number three here. Now, this one may surprise a lot of people. Lori Markinen. I just don't see the Utah Jazz keeping him on that roster unless they get absolutely no offers for him. Very interesting player. He's legitimately seven foot center who the Raptors could potentially use off of the bench. He's a, I wanted to call him a great three point shooter. He's had a little bit of a, you know, he went from 34% to 40% to 35.8% last year with the Cleveland Cavaliers, but he's a pretty decent three point shooter, I would say. And he's doing it on high volume shots as well. So again, legitimate seven foot center. And again, free throw shooting is huge for the Raptors. They need free throw shooters and he's scoring in the double digits as well. The only questions I will have, if the Raptors were to trade for someone like a Laurie Markkinen, you look at the minutes played. Where are those minutes coming from? Are you going to be sacrificing Precious was development to give Laurie Markkinen some shots and some minutes? And also to take into consideration, the Raptors currently off of their bench have Precious Achiwa, have Thaddeus Young, have Chris Boucher. All three guys can play the power forward minutes. And obviously, Pascal Siakam and Scotty Barnes can play as well. So are you potentially throwing in Chris Boucher for Laurie Markkinen? I'm not quite sure about that. Of course, given Laurie Markkinen's uh, weaknesses on defense as well, again, he, he looks interesting, right? On statistical wise, he looks very interesting when you talk about certain things that he could do for the Raptors, but he's not a great rebounder. He's not a really shot blocker either. But again, he could be an interesting pickup for the Raptors. Scores in the double digits. But again, the thing is, where are those minutes coming from? He played 25 minutes and 30 minutes with the Chicago Bulls and the Cleveland Cavaliers. I just don't see him getting those minutes with the Raptors. But if the Raptors do decide they want a big man who can stretch the floor, Laurie Markkinen could definitely be an interesting piece as well. So let's move on to our next player here on our list. And again, a very, very interesting player. And one I honestly very much like is Bojan Bogdanovic. Now, he has had quite an interesting career. He's played with the Brooklyn Nets. It didn't start off too well. He played with the Indiana Pacers and then Utah Jazz. He's finally found his footing with the Utah Jazz. And I think he's done a tremendous job. As you see there, 20 points, 17 points, 18 points scored in the last three seasons. And a great, great three-point shooter, much like Malik Beasley. I mean, he's essentially shot near 40% in his last five NBA seasons. And again, he's doing that on high volume shooting. Even his two-point percentage field goal is very effective. And like I said, free throw percentage is huge. And like he's he's going to provide some scoring. But I also think he's very underrated in his passing. I know it may not necessarily show it on the stat sheet, but he's very well capable of making those high IQ plays, get his teammates involved. And I think he just makes other players around him better. So I think he could be another piece that really intrigues me for the Raptors. And again, he's listed actually as a small forward. He can play the power forward position as well, given the size. The only question would be, now, where do you insert him in the lineup? Would you play him at the shooting guard position? Would you play him at the small forward position? Thaddeus Young can play the small forward position, but Thaddeus Young he can also play the point guard as well. So he can play multiple positions. But he would really fit into the Raptors system even more so than Malik Beasley and Jordan Clarkson given his size. He's a little bit taller than them. He's a little bit more lengthier than them. So he definitely fits in a little bit better in terms of if Masai Ujiri is looking for the length. Bojan Bogdanovic could be a very interesting player for the Toronto Raptors. Now let's move on to our last player on the list here. And that is Mike Conley. Yes, that may surprise quite a few people. Taking into consideration Mike Conley's age, he's 34 years old. He's really up there in age and he needs to realistically play a lot of minutes. You're not going to trade for someone like a Mike Conley and play him 15 minutes off the bench. That makes no sense. So Mike Conley could potentially be someone that could fit in a need for the Raptors. As I was saying, Fred Van Lee has played heavy minutes. Malachi Flynn and Delano Banton aren't there yet. So maybe the Raptors decide, you know what, they want a veteran point guard off of the bench. That could potentially be Mike Conley. He's a veteran leader. He brings in very high IQ basketball. He's had those great years, great runs with the Memphis Grizzlies. And he's a, his free throw percentage went a little bit down last season. But overall, he's a good free throw shooter. He's also a really underrated passer. I know his statistics, assist-wise, may not be up there. But he's good and he's a great defensive player as well, which fits in with the Raptors. He's a smart high IQ player, a smart basketball player overall. But to add to the fact that he's a really good defender, that could be a really interesting acquisition for the Raptors now again his scoring has gone down a little bit and that's understandable given the fact that he has played a lot of minutes but he's also getting older but the one concern I will say about someone like Mike Conley is his injuries now he did have a decent season last year playing 72 games but look at the seasons prior to 51 games 
47 games. I don't know about that, guys. I really don't. I know he's had some injury issues as well. So those are just certain things you need to take into consideration. But finally, we are done going through the five players. And I'm going to go through my three players. Realistically, I think the Raptors could trade for. So let's get into that. And the three players you could potentially have the Raptors trade for. Again, it won't be easy. Bojan Bogdanovic, Jordan Clarkson, Malik Beasley. All of these players make the most sense out of the five players I have listed. And I want to quickly touch upon salary as well because this is important. Now, Bojan Bogdanovic is actually my favorite on the list, but you need to take into consideration. He has one year left and he's also making $19.3 million. He's also 33 years old. Now, although I think he would probably be the best fit out of these three players, the thing you do need to take into consideration, he has one year left. So unless the Raptors are absolutely sure they can re-sign him and he's getting up there in age as well i don't know this is probably the most difficult acquisition and also taking into consideration he's making about 19.3 million dollars where's that money coming from when you're trading are you potentially throwing in someone like a chris boucher plus fillers to acquire bojan bogdanovich are you throwing in Thaddeus young again that wouldn't necessarily be a good look for the raptors given the fact that they had just signed him so i again it makes it a little bit challenging to trade for someone like a bojan bogdanovich and also taking into consideration, he's a poor defender. He's not the greatest defender. In fact, you could argue that for a lot of Jazz's players. But I think you absolutely have to cross him off the list. And just the fact that you're probably going to have to, realistically speaking, give up some assets. And then when I mean assets, I mean either young players or potentially a first-round pick. You're dealing with Danny Ainge. You know he loves his picks. And he's not going to give these guys up easy. And he, in fact, you could even say he's someone that may just make a deal out of despite you saw that with the New York Knicks with, uh, you know, what they were offering the Utah Jazz, but he didn't take that offer and he took what the Cleveland Cavaliers were giving him. Now, Jordan Clarkson, again, this one I find very interesting for several reasons because he could be an instant spark off of the bench, but he is making two years. He's a, He's got about two year contract, 27.6 million total. So he's making about $13 million, which makes it a little bit easier to trade for more so than Bojan Bogdanovic. So he's making about $13 million, but he does have a second year player option so essentially you could maybe have him sign for one year as well so that is the risk of trading for someone like a jordan clarkson his value also is a lot higher taking into consideration that not only if the raptors were to call the utah jazz regarding someone like a jordan clarkson you have to take into consideration there's probably about another 15 squads realistically speaking as i said guys you can plug him on any team around the nba and you know he's going to be a spark off the bench so the raptors will likely have to give up a lot more for someone like a Jordan Clarkson. Definitely a first round pick, maybe even a second round pick. I don't know if Masai Ujiri is willing to do that. Now, in terms of his strengths and his weaknesses, he's a great ISO scorer. We've seen him get some absolute buckets even during playoff time. He's a big time scorer. He's a He's got a really good mid-range game as well. He's not the greatest three-point shooter. He's got a really nice mid-range game. But one thing, much like Bojan Bogdanovic, is he's a piss poor defender. He's not a good defender at all. In fact, I don't have the defensive ratings but he has had a negative in the defensive ratings but also in defensive win shares as well so do you really want to trade for a player who sure he can provide a lot of buckets but he's a negative on the defensive side and he's a little bit undersized again so those are just some of the questions you have to ask yourselves and jordan clarkson as i said his value is going to be at an all-time high because a lot of nba teams will be calling for him you're going to have to give up a first round pick and let's talk about malik beasley who's got two years left 31.9 million dollars so about 15 or so million dollars he's making on his first year about 16 somewhat million dollars on his second year and they also have a um, second year as team option though so you have two years control of malik beasley which makes him a little bit more attractive than guys like jordan clarkson and bojan and he maybe not as much as like you may not have to give up as much for someone like malik beasley he is 25 years old he fits in timeline wise age wise at the very least a little bit better than the other two guys we are 33 years old and 30 years old. He does play the shooting guard position. He's listed at about 6'4", so a little bit bigger than Jordan Clarkson, I believe. But still, he's a little bit undersized for a shooting guard. But again, he is a really good scorer as well. Good three-point shooter, which the Raptors could always use off of the bench. So he could be an interesting piece as well. But again, all of these guys, all of these guys, I don't know if Masai Ujiri trades for them because they're all really bad defenders. They can definitely all have one thing in common. They can score really well. They're pretty good three-point shooters, maybe aside for Jordan Clarkson, but they're not great defenders. So those are some things you need to take into consideration. They look great on paper, and you know what? They could be great if we were trading for them, but would Masai Ujiri trade for someone who's not a good defender? We know Nick Nurse 
is the same way. He's not going to give minutes to people who are not willing to play defense. That's not to say these guys can't play defense. Maybe it's just they chose not to because they're so much, they're focused on offense, right? So again, um, I know Malik Beasley, technically he was on the Minnesota Timberwolves, but not a good defender, not a good defender. So again, if I were to choose one of these three though, this becomes a really tough decision. I'd probably go with someone like a Malik Beasley. Again, it becomes challenging because what do you potentially give up? Do you add in someone like a Cam Birch plus fillers to get to that $15 million range? I'm not sure if the Raptors have a trade exception. You could potentially maybe use that up as well. But what are you willing to throw in for someone like a Malik Beasley? Now, the Jordan Clarkson, I probably wouldn't do because his asking price is going to be insanely high. But also consider that Jordan Clarkson is usually someone you would probably trade for if you were trading, let's say, or going for an NBA championship, then he's that missing piece off of the bench. That could really impact the Raptors in the playoffs. But the Raptors are not in that position. So they could probably acquire someone like a Malik Beasley. But same thing with him as well. That's quite a bit of money to dish out for someone like him. He's a great scorer. Don't get me wrong. I would love to have him on the Raptors. But for someone who doesn't play defense, I'm not sure if Masai Ujiri goes for them. So those are just some of the questions you would have. These three obviously make the most sense for the Raptors. Mike Conley makes a lot more money. And I don't know if the Raptors will trade for him. And I don't think they can. So again, the one thing you do have to take into consideration, Masai Ujiri is not going to give up a first round pick for any of these guys because he holds on to those first round picks. And essentially, the only time I see him giving up a first round pick is if the Raptors were to acquire an all-star type player or a superstar, which none of these guys are. So there may be great bench pieces. But will the Raptors actually trade them? Would you want the Raptors to trade for any of these pieces? I do want to hear your thoughts. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. And I do have a trivia question for you today. And that trivia question is, Bojan Bogdanovic was drafted by which team? Was it A, the Indiana Pacers? Was it B, the Brooklyn Nets? Was it C, Washington Wizards? Or was it D, Miami Heat? So whoever answers this trivia question correctly first in the comment section gets a shout out in my next video. But that will be it for today's video, guys. But I do want to hear your thoughts. Do you think some of these players make sense for the Raptors? Yes or no? Leave your thoughts down below. And that will be it for today's video. So thank you so much for watching this video. And I hope you guys have yourselves a great day.